And she said, well, what are you going to do for me? Uh. And I said, well, what are you talking about? What do you, what do you mean? What am I going to do for you? And she said, well, let me tell you that uh, I'm a single mom. <laughs> and my husband left me a long time ago. Uh. I have my son. He's like five or six years old. Oh. So how bad do you want me to do this? I said, well, can you just do it? And she's like, well, you have to do something for me. I'm like, okay, well, what do you want? And she said, well, first, you know, first you got to take me to the movies. Uh. You got to take me on a date. And then we have to go back to your place. Oh. And then I said, what? <laughs> Thought it was like, wow, it's kind of a crazy situation. Yeah, it's like she's like forcing you. She's like, forcing me. She's like, hey, you know, have sex with me and yeah. I'll do it. Hashtag me too. This is Eddie. What's up, Eddie? Uh, 20年前来台湾. So I came to Taiwan in December 2002. My plan was originally to come for maybe uh, one or two years. I looked at China, Taiwan, Japan, Korea. They take the ARC oh, take and they take your passport <laughs> and they lock it up like they're a little safe there. They're like, yeah, you can never run away. Because before it was a little bit more ghetto-ish. Hi, ni hao, wo si Eddie. Wo si yi ge mo xi ge Canada ren. Wo lai Taiwan da gai er shi nian hao. Wo zai tian mu kai yi ge mo xi ge chan ting. Ru guo ni you kong lai chi wo de mo xi ge shi wu hen hao chi. Xie xie. For the first question I want to ask you, like, when did you come to Taiwan? So I came to Taiwan uh, in December 2002. Oh, uh, wow. so a long time ago. I don't know how old you guys were, but uh, <laughs> yeah, probably kids. But uh, I came here. My plan was originally to come for maybe uh, one or two years, uh -huh. uh, because actually I went to school in Canada to be police officer. Oh, police officer. Yeah, police officer. Because oh, I'm cool. always the kind of the person who likes to help people. Uh huh. And I was doing that, and then I did my police top officer test. I finished everything. Uh, got all the way to the end, and then the final interview, uh, they said, you're too young, so you can come back in two years to reapply. Oh. And I said, okay, well, I've got to go do something else for two years. Came to Taiwan, and then I never left. Oh, yeah. wow, that is cool. Yeah. <laughs> but like, what was the original reason that you come here? For me, I wanted to come to Asia. And so when I said, okay, I'm going to come to Asia, I will look at all the countries. I looked at China, Taiwan, Japan, Korea, and then a couple of the other countries as well. And I thought, well, where I live, it's cold in the winter. Uh, I'm close to Alaska, oh, right? Yeah. So lots of snow. When I looked out here, I saw Korea and Japan, they also snow. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm, I'm done with the snow. <laughs> I said, that's too much snow for me. And I thought, well, Taiwan's a small island, tropical island. It seems to be hot all the time, nice and warm. So for that, that was a big one. And I thought if I could learn another language, then Mandarin is a pretty good one to learn. Yeah. So like now you can speak Chinese, right? Now I can speak, yeah, we can, oh. we can do whatever. Also, yeah. uh, okay, because I'm so Back then, like 20 years ago, when there was like not that many foreigners, and yeah. when you start to speak to people yeah. in Taiwan, like in Chinese, like how do they react? Sure. Uh, they got scared all the time. Scared. As soon as you talk to them, you just see this face like panic. Like, like, oh my gosh. Uh, and they say, oh, oh, moment the English Oh, how do they react? And they, and they just look at me. And even when I speak Chinese uh, to them, they would say, I'm sorry, I don't speak English. Oh. <laughs> and I said, well, but I'm speaking Chinese. I yeah. said, oh, uh, uh, Tom said, oh, oh, I cannot speak English. Oh. <laughs> I said, oh, you, you And then they're like, no English, sorry. And I'm like, maybe my tone is wrong. Uh, so I would say, uh, uh, And I'm just trying all the tones. And then they're like, 
I don't speak English, I don't speak English. And then I said, okay, well, is there a McDonald's here? <laughs> oh, McDonald's over there. I said, okay, I go to McDonald's, mm. yeah, yeah. When you just came to Taiwan, like, mm -hmm. what did you start to do here? Like? So I came here, I was coaching soccer because mm -hmm. in Canada I coach soccer. And then I also taught English. Mm -hmm. I taught kindergarten and I taught uh, elementary school English and stuff. I think I'm pretty good with little kids and stuff. Actually, one funny thing about that is um, now the kids that I taught that were like five years old, now they invite me to their wedding. Oh. And then, so it's like, whoa, I'm getting old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this is a cool yeah. thing. That it's very cool, yeah. Do you have like any crazy stories about you living <laughs> here? <laughs> sure. Uh, my very first school I worked at, uh -huh. Uh, I finished my contract and I went to work at this other school in Xinjiang. It wasn't the greatest place to work, so I found another school. And then when I was finishing my contract, I said, okay, I'm not going to renew, I'm going to go to mm -hmm. Danshui. And they said, oh no, no, we want you to stay. And I said, well, you know, you go I'm going to go, I'm going to move. They just said, okay, whatever, here's your schedule. If you don't come, you don't come, or whatever. You know, I went to the other school. I applied there, I got all my paperwork done. Uh -huh. Then they said, the government rejected your ARC. And I said, well, why? They said, because your old school, oh. they blacklisted you. Uh -huh. So I said, I didn't even know that was a thing. They said, so your old school said, you're, you know, you're really bad with kids and you're this bad person, like this criminal, whatever. So but, you can't- but it's, not, but it's kind of like they lied, right? Yeah, they lied, of course, yeah. right? So I went back to the school and I said, what happened? Why did you do that? The manager who was working there was this kind of like a, like a husky lady, this big lady. She said, yeah, I, I, you know, we did that. And, and she said, I can fix that. And I said, okay, so please fix it. Uh -huh. And she said, well, what are you gonna do for me? Uh -huh. And I said, well, what are you talking about? What do you, what do you mean, what am I gonna do for you? And she said, well, let me tell you that uh, I'm a single mom <laughs> and my husband left me a long time ago. Uh -huh. I have my son, he's like five or six years old. Oh. So how bad do you want me to do this? I said, well, can you just do it? And she's like, well, you have to do something for me. I'm like, okay, well, what do you want? And she said, well, first, you know, first you gotta take me to the movies. Uh, you gotta take me on a date. And then we have to go back to your place. Oh. And then I said, what? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, so if, if you do that, I can remove the blacklist. Thing. Uh, and then I said, wow, I guess, wow. I guess I'm going to Hong Kong to get another visa, right? <laughs> so so I like, said, okay, so then I left and I, I had to go back to Hong Kong, reapply for a visa, and then get a student visa because I thought it was like, wow, it was kind of a crazy situation. Yeah, it's like she's like forcing you. She's like... forcing me. She's like, hey, you know, have sex with me yeah. and I'll do it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you're, <laughs> mm. yeah. So basically it was like, yeah, hashtag me too. Like, hey, yeah, right, right, right. Me too, me too <laughs> thing. So yeah, it was funny. But it's stressful that, that, as well. It was stressful because I had. You have another job to take and you yeah. cannot leave the company because they're not allowing you. They to don't leave. let you leave, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think that the, one of the things here is the government will give the company too much power. Uh -huh. So at this school I actually worked at, there was a couple of other foreigners, and after you get your ARC, they take the ARC, well, they take and they take your passport, <laughs> and they lock it up like they're a little safe there. Uh -huh. They're like, yeah, you can never run away. Oh, wow. And you're like, oh yeah, this is a great working environment. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> they take your ARC and your passport, which is illegal. Yeah, it is. Right? Like in the passport, it says, you know, no one's allowed to take it, but yeah, oh. they, they would try it. It's for almost it. like a mafia. Yeah, this is crazy, yeah. <laughs> And that we actually met the owner one time. Uh -huh. And he came in, you know, it's black BMW. You know, everybody has to line up like like uh, and you know, like bow to this guy. So yeah, so there's some some crazy schools like that. How was it to live here like 20 years ago? Because I think it was quite different maybe. Very different, yeah. So 20 years ago when I came here, uh, there used to be Blockbuster Video. Oh yeah. Did yeah you know yeah, about yeah. Blockbuster Video? And the first few years I was here, on the weekend I didn't know that many people, so I would go. And every time I would go in to rent a movie, there was no other foreigners there. I was uh. living in Tuchen. It was weird because girls were super aggressive as well. Oh. Yeah, they would just be like, oh, come, come, you teach me, you teach me English, I teach you Chinese. Oh. And I would just, everywhere you go, get, you know, get renting a movie or go out and get like a teppanyaki or something. Uh. And everybody just starts talking to you. Oh, I thought, oh, I think I'm going to stay. <laughs> <laughs> when you just came here like mm -hmm. 20 years ago, like what was the biggest culture shock for you? You know, when you order like a chicken, and the chicken comes out and the head is on it and the chicken head is like, uh, you know, and you're like, whoa, why is the head still on the chicken? And the feet and stuff like that. So that was a little bit different. You would take a taxi ride and taxi driver says, oh, you know, where are you from? Are you from America? Everyone says America. Uh, and I say, well, I'm not from America, from Canada. And they say, oh, okay, how much money do you make in a month? Oh. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. So people would always ask me, how much money you make, how much money you make. Everything else is great, I mm. love that. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. And what was the difficulties to live 
uh, in Taiwan like back then, like 20 years ago for foreigner? Uh, at that time, if you couldn't speak Chinese very well, nobody would really speak English. Uh -huh. I mean, for example, uh, I had to get my health check, uh -huh. right? There's no Google Maps. Uh -huh. It's just a paper map. So they give you this paper map. You need to go to uh, Renai Lu, this uh -huh. hospital, big hospital there. That's where you need to get your health check. So, okay. So I take the MRT, I start to walk, and I'm looking at the map, and I look up, and then, okay, not this street. So I keep walking, I look yeah. at the next one, I'm like, oh, no, not this one. <laughs> I keep walking, this one. And it says Jen I Lu with uh -huh. a J. And I go, can't be this, right? So I keep going, and then I ask somebody, I'm like, oh, can, can you show me where this, where is this? this street is, uh -huh. you know, Ren I Lu? And they're like, oh, you passed it, it's over there. And I said, no, no, that one's Jen I Lu. Uh -huh. But Taiwanese people, they don't look at the pinyin. Oh, right, right, right. right? And so the opinion was really bad uh, a long time ago. It would say J, J-E-N, so Jen I Lu, right? It took me so long to find Jen I Lu mm. because I'm looking for an R, right, but right. it was a J, stuff like that. Because you've been here like for 20 years. Yes. So how do you think Taiwan changed for 20 years? I think that it's much better. It, it's tough because before it was a little bit more ghetto-ish. Yeah. Oh, it was like, like a ghetto here. It was a little bit more ghetto. Like oh. it's always more similar to like a Mexico, uh -huh. but now it's definitely a lot cleaner. It's a lot nicer. People are more polite. Like uh, I remember one of my first weeks, I thought I would never buy a motorcycle, I would never buy a scooter mm. because the driving was was scary for me. Like my second month, I bought one right away. Mm. But like a motorcycle oh, style, yeah, yeah. and I parked in front of my house. Uh, there was kind of like this, uh, like a Bing Lung shop there. Mm -hmm. Almost every morning when I would come out, somebody had spit Bing Lung all over my my oh. motorcycle. Like every almost every morning, so I have to come down and I have to clean all the Bing Lung off my scooter. And then eventually I got smart and I parked somewhere else. <laughs> but yeah, actually before you would see a lot of like uh, the Bing Lung you know, everywhere. spit everywhere. Yeah. And now now not so much. Yeah, so that's that's one thing that's changed. What, what things about Taiwan do you like? People are super nice. It's always, mm. that's always the first thing. I like the weather. I like hot because like I used to coach soccer here. So I'm, I'm used to the heat and in the restaurant, the kitchen is always really hot. So I, I love the weather here. I do like the food. I like the food here. One of, one of the reasons when I was younger that, that I thought I'm gonna stay longer was because there was lots of beautiful women everywhere uh -huh. and everybody wanted to learn English. And it was quite, yeah, it was before Tinder and all that stuff, uh -huh. no apps. Actually before smartphone, I think, yeah. Oh. So a long time ago, so that, it was that. I think that the convenience is really cool. Like if I need to pay bills or something, I can just go to 7-Eleven and just pay everything, mm -hmm. right? I think it's the, the most powerful thing here is I think the people. people yeah, are, exactly. I think everyone probably says a similar thing, <laughs> but the, the people are very nice, mm -hmm. yeah. And and, it's very safe. And how about the things that you don't like about Taiwan? I would say driving is a tough one. Uh -huh. Driving because, you know, everybody, the driving's a little bit chaotic. Again, the schooling is tough because I have a daughter who goes to local school, but when she goes to local school, depending on the teacher, she has a lot of homework. So sometimes she will do, you know, eight to four, and then two hours of homework is oh. that's like normal right, right. Uh, but I remember like grade one grade two they have midterms and like they have all these exams and, and all this crazy stuff so I think that that's a little bit too much and now I want to ask you the last sure. question if you have the chance like what things would you change about Taiwan what would I change about Taiwan okay uh, definitely the school uh -huh. the school like I was mentioning school is one thing I would definitely change I think that the driving is getting better mm -hmm. the driving and the school those are those are tough but yeah I think I think aside from that it's pretty it's pretty close I think people people are very open to mm -hmm. other cultures like I probably for yourself as well, like you coming here, we're not Taiwanese, right? Mm. But I think people are happy to chat and, mm. and, 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 and learn new stuff from us. And, and, and I think it's pretty cool. So I think, yeah, probably driving. I think school needs to be a little bit more like chill. Mm. So just take it easy on kids. Okay, okay. Let, yeah. them, have, let them enjoy, let yeah, them be right, kids. Right. Let kids be kids, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you, thank you so much for sharing. You, that was great. Thank you so much. Thank you.